So if we look at communism and they define Engels and, uh, and uh, Marx say the bo- abolition, of, uh, 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 ab- abolition of property, right? And then you have the, at the end of the book, forcible overthrows of all existing social condition. Okay, right. it's fine. So we have those two definitions. Then what, how would you define socialism? Yeah. And uh, Lenin wrote in The State and Revolution, which is his kind of um, opus. And he wrote that in 1917. Couldn't finish writing it because got, uh, because the revolution overtook them. But he wrote in there, he said, as Marx said, in, 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 in communism, socialism is just the final transitionary step before communism. So, you know, the, it, 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 it's one phase that leads to a higher phase. Marion Smith, who was the executive director of Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation, says, well, uh, just as religious believers, Christians and Jews aspire to heaven, the socialist aspires to communism, right? Communism is the sort of new Jerusalem. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the utopia. That's, that's the heaven on earth. So in true Marxist-Leninist theory, socialism is the final transitionary step to communism. Now that said, You'll run into all sorts of socialists today who say, well, but that's not the kind of socialist that I am, right? Um, I don't support communism. I wouldn't go that far. I support single payer health care. I support maybe government taking over the energy sector. I support this. And that. Well, all right, fine. But if you type in at Google or Merriam Webster socialism, what will pop up is socialism, common ownership of the means of production. So historically, socialism, that's what it is. USSR, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. It's the final transitionary step to communism. It makes you you wonder. So, So I'm a math guy. I'm a numbers guy because it makes sense to me and it's absolute, right? So if I look at communism, communism, if I go on one side, 100% to me is communism. Okay, so is there a way to come up with a number that tells us where socialism is when it comes down to taxes? Has that That's study right. been done? Because Arthur Laffer said yes, around 33 and a half, 34 and a half percent. And, you know, uh, you've seen a lot of different studies, but is there a way to quantify what socialism is since we know how to quantify communism? That's a great question. I love that. And in my comparative politics course at Grove City College every fall, we use the Heritage Foundation's Index of Economic Freedom. They rank countries from number one to about number 170, most economically free to least economically free. And the top two have been Hong Kong and Singapore pretty much ever since they started doing this study in the 1990s. And then you have New Zealand, maybe Ireland, maybe the UK, maybe the United States were around the top 10. And then China, I think, is usually around like 100, 120. Um, Spain, Italy, France, you know, who knows, 30s, 70s, they're all over the place. But at the very end, the very end is always North Korea and Cuba. Cuba. Yeah. So in a way, I, that, that guide I find very, very useful as, uh, as kind of um, a ranking system. And a country there that would be around 150 Venezuela is down at the bottom now too. Zimbabwe is down at the bottom. So I'd say when you're in that range of like the bottom 10%, bottom 20%, 150 to 170, you're kind of in, you know, collectivism, socialism, communism, you know, that you're, you're in that territory. Got it. But th- there's never been a number that they've put to it. Meaning if, ta- if you pay more than 60% taxes, it's socialism. If you pay more than 30% taxes at socialism. What that that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's a good and, question. Yeah. At, and to do it through tax rates, to truly have abolition of private property. By the way, the top three in Marx and Engels 10-point plan, abolition of property and land, graduated or progressive income tax. Oh, and my favorite, abolition of all right of inheritance. All right. So abolition of all right of inheritance would technically mean right? For you and I who are practical guys and are trying to figure out what these guys are saying, that would have to be like 100% um, inheritance tax, right? Death tax. So if you have a 100% tax on inheritance, it's the only way you're going to abolish all right of inheritance. That would be communism. Um, I, if you have a 50% tax rate on inheritance, 
I'd like to call that socialist. I think it's pretty damned outrageous. Um, 70% would be our rate, tax rates. Uh, in the United States, we introduced the federal income tax in 1913, permanent federal income tax. It was a few percentage points. By 1921, under Woodrow Wilson, it was 73%. FDR took it up to 94% on income over $100,000. And FDR, if you read Bert Folsom's book, FDR Goes to War, FDR in the 1940s wanted a 99.5% tax rate on incomes over $100,000. Now, I would call that pretty close to communism. He might not be quoting Marx when he's doing it, but I'd have to say that that would be pretty close, a 99.5% tax rate on income over $100,000. That's like almost complete confiscation and redistribution of wealth at that point. But to pick a hard number, Marx and Engels never gave one. And this is infuriating for practical minded business people. They also, they would say, well, you know, at this point you've left capitalism and then socialism and then capital. I wanna know at which point in the process we're there, right? I want to know who's the vanguard, who's the group of leaders that say, oh, okay, all right, okay. We are now comrades from point B to point C, right? I can now say that we've officially entered communist society. None of this is ever clear, and it has to be decided by dictators. That's what it comes down to. Very interesting, by the way, on the 99.5, I mean, I, I would... I would love to know what's the right book to read, where it's going to be unbiased and it's going to tell me what was his motive in taking it to 99.5. Like what, yeah, what is it's, it? It's, um, it's Bert Folsom, uh, FDR Goes to War. He wrote it with his wife, Anita. He's a Hillsdale professor, retired Hillsdale. And what's the book about? Um, it's called FDR Goes to War. I got it. So it's about the 1940s. And um, yeah, 99.5% rate. By the way, people thinking, well, he must have just wanted it for wartime. No, 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 no. FDR, FDR was, had jacked the rate up to 91. The reason Ronald Reagan left the Democratic Party was um, over FDR's tax rates. And that's, that's what drove him out of the Democratic Party. That probably more than anything else. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.